Hello everyone. Uh, today with you again. Um, this is Madame Kate Teresiana, and I'm going to present to you a session on food quantification. This is one of the lectures for principles of human nutrition, and it is important for all nutrition students to be well versed with this concept, including even other disciplines such as healthcare management, nursing and productive health. Let's go to some few definitions concerning food quantification. Food quantification refers to the process of measuring the amount of food consumed or the quantity of nutrients in a food. Quantifying food simply refers to counting calories and eating the right amount of nutrients from each food group. Food intake quantification refers to measuring how much food is eaten, which can be done either in a laboratory by weighing the food before and after eating. Food waste quantification refers to measuring the amount of food that is wasted. So we just have two differing words, food intake quantification and food waste quantification. Food intake measures how much food is intake, for how much food is eaten, and food waste measures the amount of food that is wasted. The importance of quantifying food. What are some of the uh, importances and benefits of quantifying food? Quantifying food is very important because it helps to control portions to avoid overeating. It ensures calorie intake aligns with goals. For example, if someone wants to lose weight, then they are going to reduce their portions. If the person wants to maintain weight, then they are going to make sure that they also maintain the amount of calories consumed. Or even someone may want to gain weight. You'll have to increase your, your, your calorie intake or your portion intake according to how much weight you wish to gain. It also helps prevent underestimating or overestimating portions, which can affect progress. Imagine you're trying to lose weight and you don't know how to quantify, you don't know how much food you should eat per meal. This is going to affect your progress. It also helps to monitor macronutrient distribution. Macronutrients, we have the proteins, the carbohydrates, and the fats. So when you monitor your carbohydrates, uh, macronutrient intake, then you'll be able to achieve a balanced diet and nutrition. It also encourages mindful eating and raises awareness about food habits. There are some precautions that you need to take while measuring food. Let's look at a few of the important precautions that you can take while measuring food. One, you have to make sure you use the right tools. You can use measuring cups, food scales, and also spoons. You have to make sure you're either measuring a raw or cooked food. And these measurements have to be followed according to the guidelines. Some food items, for example, rice or meat or beans, may change in weight or volume after cooking. So to measure the, the portion that you need to consume, it will be much better if you do so while you already cooked, compared to when you measure while raw. Avoid measuring directly from packaging. You have to portion out what you want to eat to prevent mindless eating. Account for sauces and condiments. Uh, these uh, sauces and condiments and appetizers can add extra calories. So you have to make sure that as you add them onto your portion, you are mindful of how much you have added and how much calories they may contribute. Check serving sizes or labels. Portions consumed may differ from what is listed. So have to make sure that you read food labels before consuming a particular food. Calories. Uh, let's briefly look at the concept of calories. What is a calorie? A calorie is a unit of energy released from food. And it is very important in helping to guide eating habits, though it does not reflect general nutrition uh, intake. What are the calorie needs of individuals based on their activity levels? We have calorie needs for women and calorie needs for men. And they are different. Based on the level of physical activity 
and basing also on the physiological makeup of the body of a woman and a man. So for women, the women that are not active need to consume just 1,600 calories per day. For the moderately active women, they need to consume 1,800 calories per day. And those that live an active lifestyle should consume between 2,000 and 2,200 calories per day. For the men, we find that men generally have a higher energy consumption compared to women. And this is based on their physiological makeup, their hormonal makeup, and also their activity levels. Because we can see from here that a man that is not active needs to consume the same amount of calories as a woman that is very active. So a man that is not active consumes 2,000 to 2,200 calories per day. The moderately active man will consume 2,200 to 2,400 calories per day. And the active man will consume 2,400 to 2,600 calories per day. So here we note that the consumption of uh, calories for men is naturally higher than for women. You can go ahead and find out why. You can do some research and find out some of the reasons why the calorie intake for, for men is higher than for women. Let's look at some mac macronutrients in 100 calories. Macronutrients, we know that we have the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats. And the amount of calories that carbohydrates contribute per one gram is four calories. You can find four calories in one gram of carbohydrates. For proteins, it's also the same as for carbohydrates, four calories per gram. And then fats have the highest amount of calories per one gram, which is nine calories. How about if we are looking at the grams in 100 calories? Because we are having four calories in one gram. In one gram. How about 100 calories? When you do the calculation there, we have uh, 25 grams in 100 calories. For protein, likewise, it will be 25 grams in 100 calories. And for fats, will will be 11.11 grams in 100 calories. Let's look at some examples of 100 calorie snacks. Each op option contains around 100 calories, but the nutrient content varies. We are looking out for the calories, basically. That is the amount of energy contained in this uh, particular food item. We have not looked at the, the proteins, the carbohydrates, so let's look at the uh, proteins, the fats, and the micronutrients, and also the vitamins. So a fruit, for example, a banana of 7 to 8 inches contains 100 calories. 20 peanuts, when you count one nut, and total up to 20, 20 peanuts will contribute also to 100 calories. And this is going to help you to also quantify the amount of uh, the, the food you consume depending on how much calories you, you desire to attain in a day. Popcorns, three cups of low-fat popcorn also contribute 100 calories. Treats, for example, two chocolate sandwich cookies or a half cup of low-fat ice cream also contributes 100 calories. For proteins, one scrambled egg or two ounces of baked chicken also contribute 100 calories calories. So with basing on this uh, few examples, you can be able to quantify how much calories you may consume in a day from a specific food item. Determination of calories in food. How do we find out how many calories are contained in food? We've been talking about 100 calories in a 7 to 8 inch banana, 100 calories in a 2 eggs, so how do we find out this number of calories in this particular food? One of the ways is uh, using a method called calorimetry. And the calorimetry, you can use uh, two methods. We have the direct calorimetry and the indirect calorimetry. The direct calorimetry measures the heat released when a food is burned in a bomb calorimeter. So the, the machine here used is the 
calorie meter, specifically the bulk calorie meter. And this method is very accurate, but can be very time consuming and expensive. So you find that many people do not go for it because of its uh, the quality of time required and also the expenses that are incurred. The indirect calorimetry is a method that estimates the calories in a food based on its macronutrient content. Here we get the calories based on the amount of macronutrients, that is the carbohydrates, the proteins and the fats. And this method is less accurate than the direct calorimetry, but it is much faster and cheaper. So you find a lot of people will go for it. But if you want to achieve quality and accuracy, you'd want to go for direct calorimetry. We can also use food composition tables. Now, this is a database of the calorie content of different foods. And these tables are based on calorimetry, direct or indirect calorimetry data. However, the accuracy of these tables can also vary depending on the quality of the data and the methods used to collect it. This is a sample of a food composition table. And this table creates for you the amount of each nutrient in a particular food portion in grams. So, for example, if you're looking at cereals and millet, 30 grams of uh, this cereal and millet will give you 100 kilocalories of energy, will give you 3 grams of protein, 20 grams of carbohydrates, and 0 0.8 grams of fat. So for each, you'll find that the amount will be different according to the measurements. And then we have a very important concept of serving sizes and serving portions. We want to differentiate what is a serving size and what is a portion size. This is very important when it comes to quantifying the food intake in a day. A serving size is the amount of a specific food or drink that people typically consume. So this has been determined for a given population and a specific gender, could be male or female, could be maybe South Sudanese or maybe Americans or Africans. So this is determined and you usually find it on a, a food label. It is a standardized amount of food or drink, some, for example, one cup or one ounce. And it is usually set by the food and drug authority found on top of a nutrition facts label on packaged food and drinks and it is very important because it helps consumers to make informed choices. It is used on food labels for comparison. You can compare one container to another and choose which of the two is much better compared to uh, how much calories you need to achieve in a day. A food size on the other hand is the amount of food you choose to put on your plate and actually eat. This is how much you eat and it can differ from serving sizes and vary by meal or restaurant. So we can clearly see the difference between a serving size and a portion size. You know that a serving size is the amount of uh, food that a, a person typically consumes and this has been determined by the Food and Drug Authority and it is usually written on food labels. But the portion size is the amount of food you choose to consume. They could have written on a food label that you need 100 grams of this food per day, but you choose to consume 50 grams, depending on how much calories you need to achieve in a day. You can choose to even consume more than the, the written amount, depending on what you want to achieve. If you want to gain weight, you may choose to consume more. If you want to lose weight, then you will choose to consume less than the written value. That is the portion size. What are some of the tips to manage portions? I'm going to use a grammatical representation of these few tips. There are about nine tips, and uh, I'll use this uh, just to show you. One of the tips is to use smaller dinnerware. Using smaller dishes can lower the amount of food you consume while making you feel just as satisfied. Two, you can use your plate as a portion guide. Uh, the concept of my plate, I have recorded some videos on that concept as well. The my plate helps you to measure the amount of nutrients you need, the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats, the other micronutrients. 
the vitamins and the minerals. So we know that uh, the carbohydrates and the proteins contribute half of your plate. So you can be able to measure on your plate half containing carbohydrates and proteins. Out of that half, a quarter is having carbohydrates and a quarter is containing the proteins. Then the, the vegetables, the fruits and vegetables, will also contribute half of your plates. So the other half of your plates will have fruits and vegetables. Of that half, a quarter will be fruit and the other quarter will be vegetables. And then you also have to account for the water, the fats, and the other uh, appetizers that you add on your food. Three, use your hands as a serving guide. We are going to look shortly on that concept of hand portions. And we shall be able to know how much does a palm-sized serving contribute for women and men. Four, when eating out, ask for a half portion. Restaurant serving sizes are on average 2.5 times larger than standard ones. So instead of asking for a full portion, ask for the half portion. Five, start all meals with a glass of water. It is important that you fill up uh, on water about 30 minutes before you take a, uh, a particular meal. If you're planning to go to the restaurant to eat or you're planning to have your lunch in 30 minutes time, 30 minutes before that lunch, make sure that you take at least one liter of water. And this is going to help you to distinguish between hunger and thirst and will help you make, make you feel more satisfied and less hungry. And this is important for people that want to lose weight especially. Six, you need to take it slowly. Sit down to meals with no other distractions. Eating slowly regulates portion control. I, for one, if I'm going to eat, I need to be relaxed. And I need to be in charge. And I need to concentrate. That is when I'll be able to eat a desired amount of food. But if there are distractions around me, and I'm trying to talk here, here I'm on the computer, here I'm doing this and this, I'll not be able to achieve a lot. I'll not be able to eat much. I'll be distracted, and at the end of the day, I'll even lose appetite. So before you go to eat, you have to prepare your mind that you're going to eat. And you take it slowly. Eat slowly. Don't be in a hurry. Nobody's chasing you. Seven, don't eat straight from the container. Try reportioning snacks into individual portions and serving from plates rather than a large container. Next, be aware of suitable serving size. Use measuring equipment to begin with to correctly assess how much food is normally eaten. And finally, use a food diary. Jotting down your total calorie intake can increase awareness of what you consume and motivate you to make healthier choices. So these are some of the tips that you can follow to manage your portions and achieve correct portions in a day. Healthy food chips. Healthy food shifts are basically what you need to live a healthy lifestyle. You shift from the bad food choices to healthier food choices. For example, older adults often need fewer calories but more nutrients. Nutrient-dense foods are the key to achieving healthy food shifts. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins and low fat dairy. And also when you're shifting to a healthy food, you need to do it gradually. Gradual food shifts help build healthier eating patterns over time. For example, let's look at some of the healthy beverage shifts. Beverages can add, can add hidden calories. So as you consume them, you have to be very, very careful. Swap high calorie drinks with nutrient dense alternatives. For example, instead of sodas, sugary coffee or alcohol, you can choose to have water instead of the soda, have or teas instead of the sugary coffee, and also no fat milk instead of alcohol. With that, you'll be able to achieve a healthy food shift. Also, some of the examples of healthy food shifts that you can have. You can shift from whole milk to low fat milk, milk in your breakfast cereal. You can also shift from soda with shift from soda with added sugar to water during lunch. You can also shift from a cream-based pasta to a dish to one 
with a lighter sauce and more vegetables for dinner. So you shift from whole milk to low fat milk in your breakfast and then from soda with added sugars to water during lunch, depending on what you want to achieve. Then the, 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 the aspect of hand portions. Hand portions offer a simple way to estimate food quantities. Instead of using a standard uh, uh, measuring equipment like cups or weight scales, you can choose to use your hand as a controller for your portion sizes. Here there is no need for measuring tools, just use your hand size for guidance. Portions are personalized. Larger hands equal to more food and smaller hands equal to less food. So the portion guide overview, we have a portion size guide using the hand for proteins, vegetables, carbohydrates and fats. For proteins, the comp size, if you put a, 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 a quantity of a protein food, just the pump size will be enough for you. Vegetables use the fist size. Carbohydrates use the cupped hand. And then fats use the thumb size. So this is a pictorial representation of how much you can consume using your hand portion. And the, the portion sizes will differ for men and women. For example, the protein portions. Men need two pump sized portions, which will contribute 40 to 60 grams of protein. And women will need only one pump sized portion that will contribute 20 to 30 grams of protein. Vegetable portions. Men need two fist sized portions, and women need one fist sized portion. The carbohydrate portions. Men need also two cupped hand portions, and women need one cupped hand portion. The flat portions, men and women need the same. That is one thumb sized portion. So how can we eat smaller, healthier portion sizes? These are some of the few tips that you can use to achieve smaller, healthier portion sizes. This is important for those people that want to lose weight and also those that want to maintain a healthy weight. When you're eating, when you're cooking at home, Offer the proper serving to each family member. Put the extra foods away. Save the leftovers for another meal. When you're dining out, skip the appetizers and split large salads or main dishes with a friend. When ordering takeout at home, eat one slice of pizza instead of two. Order small instead of a medium to split among the family so that the pieces are smaller. When watching movies at home or at the theatre, do not eat while watching TV or a movie or when on the computer. While at the movies, share a box of popcorn and avoid the free refill tabs and skip the candy. At snack time, never eat straight from the bag or box. Measure out the snacks, including the fruits and veggies, into appropriate portion sizes before giving them to your kids. All the time, Use a food diary that can help you pay closer attention to what you are eating, how much and how often you're eating. A take-home assignment. After this uh, le lecture, make a food diary and create a list of the common foods you consume daily and in what portion sizes. Observe your eating patterns daily for one week and notice any changes. And while you do that, ask yourself, do you consume higher than normal portions? If so, how can you reduce the consumption of larger portions? Do you consume smaller than normal portions? If so, how can you increase your portion size to attain a healthy weight? And at the end of the day, you can post your reactions and your observations in the discussion forum. And these are some of the references if you need to get more information. And uh, this marks the end of our lecture. Thank you so much for being very attentive.